reefs are critically important ecosystems. They actually provide habitat to 25% of marine species. Coral is a really tiny little animal and by secreting a limestone skeleton has the ability to create a 3D complex structure that can be hundreds of kilometers in size. This then provides shelter, homes and habitats to all stages of marine organisms. Zanzibar is known for its beautiful marine diversity and tourists come to Zanzibar specifically to see the amazing animals. When I talk about Zanzibar, I talk about them, it's like a jewel for Zanzibar. The area that plays a very important role in terms of tourism. Nemba Island Marine Conservation Area is one among the five MPAs in Zanzibar, which is surrounded by coral reef and the fish stocks. And Beyond has been present on Nemba since the early 90s, very, very much community and conservation driven. The business model on Nemba is ecotourism. We're on the island of Lodge and it's very dependent on ecological status of the atoll. It's very important for us to ensure that the atolls conserved properly. When I talk about the economy, for us to be able to, to prosper in terms of tourism, in terms of fisheries, we need the ocean that is in a very good healthy. So we can't achieve that without protection. When you talk about conservation, you're talking about people. When you go to the culture of the coastal people, they are, their first livelihood depends on the fishing activities. We in the Bahari, we have a faraja, because we have a hatuna we have a bahari we have a mihogo. So the Bahari is very important. But if you have a bahari, we 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 have the very interesting message from the community is the agenda of the climate change. They are seeing the changes. The stresses that are experienced globally on coral reefs are being experienced around northern Ugunja as well. So the reefs are facing very high levels of resource use. Nemba for Zanzibar is like a gold place, whereby you've got boat captains bring uh, guests to come do snorkeling and diving like a, a mass tourism, because if you see up to 300 boats in the same day, it's too much. That's why uh, coral reefs are degraded, it's remaining only 20%. Between 2019 and 2022, we had over 800% increase in tourism on that reef. The member house reef reduced its coral cover by 55%. So that's why we decided to, to talk with the and beyond and the Africa Foundation, government and the community. So we'll collaborate and develop this area together and conserve it in, in collaboration. And so we said together, we have developed a, a, a plan. We discussed the possibility of having an artificial reef to spread the visitors that are coming off to have uh, more options that people can go. The artificial reef is an important component of the bigger conservation picture of, of Nenda. It provides an alternative site for snorkeling and diving, which reduces pressures on the other shallow water reefs. Once these artificial reefs are fully productive and the corals have grown, the maturity, it increases the diversity of the ecosystem. There's just more coral, there'll be more fish, more fish for fishermen, a more resilient system. To do the artificial reefs, so the, obviously the first phase was this research on the ecological viability of this. We raised funding from and beyond and from IOKA through Africa Foundation and our Oceans Without Borders program. Then we engaged with the communities and asked them um, what they thought and where they would like to see the, the reef being built. Then the first, first step was to build the structures they made out of metal reef bar. Take me about five to six days to get all six structures made. We drew a figure in the, in the sand and then we used metal to bend the rebar and get into the shapes required. Just weld it together in order to make the structures. And then we got an intern welder who came from the local community. And he came and he learned how you create strong structures using rebar and welding. Being rainy season, it's very hard to weld in the rain. So that was a big challenge. So in order to get the structures to the water, take four 200 litre containers tied to the structures. We then get about five or six people to carry the structures to the water. 
and we launch it into the water like that. So the structure is a place about three kilometers just off Nemba Island. So they fall into the Mimka protected area. Um, so it's still protected under the Fisheries Acts. It's also been selected by the shehas or the local communities. And they've used to say that that's the best area that they feel for the, for the artificial reef to be. And coincidentally, their, their preference was exactly the sites that we chose. I brought in two specialists who do a lot of um, work on artificial reefs and they helped locate the site, so that all worked very nicely. Then the next phase is to um, fill them with large coral rock. It's very important that the rocks are large so they don't move any current. What we used was actual what we call live rock, which is actually ideal because it constitutes old coral skeleton, which is perfect then for the settlement of marine organisms because it just mimics the natural structure entirely. And then the third phase is to repopulate it with coral from the coral nursery. Fits in nicely with our coral restoration program on, this, on these degraded reefs. It's really, really important if you want a successful artificial structure that it mimics the natural surrounding coral reefs in terms of diversity and structure. We look for what we call corals of opportunity. So corals naturally break off. We collect those corals that are still alive. We put them onto little coral discs and we let them mature in the coral nursery. And once they are in a mature state and they're healthy, we then transplant them onto the artificial reef. Um, obviously our CNC team, they are from the communities and they've been trained over a period of two years in internship, how to grow corals, how to maintain the corals. We have a team of four community and conservation rangers. They are our champions to carry our message about leaving our oceans a better place. They get into the water every day, they run this project and then they do the, the maintenance to make sure that the corals that we've put on the reef don't get smothered by algae and then we do monitoring. It's really important to monitor the structures to know how successful are your structures being, what marine creatures are actually being attracted to your structures. So we have very depth, some shallow, some deep, so it can facilitate divers and snorkelers and then also the ecologically, if they were deep enough, you know, so the corals stay cool, so they don't bleach and also close enough to some natural corals so you get cross-population from corals and other organisms onto the artificial reef. My hopes for the project are that you know, it'll bring us a unique characteristic to, to Zanzibar with the turtle and the starfish. Very exciting to have more opportunities for people to go onto reefs to see different types of marine life. The success of the artificial reef, we have witnessed it from the first day. So when we drop them down to the water and start to build up with rocks, before even the life was there, there are people wanted to go and see. Husu matumbai bandia, nemi kama mimi, nishai kwa pele kapalo ageni, wame fry sana, wame enjoy sana. Waza wanaona adiabu, yani kutengezwa ili kasa, yani wali, yani ili kuwa ni amazing. Na vile vile palikuwa na samaki kibao, Na mpaka sasa hivi tayari washa samaki washafanya kama mazalia yao kwa hiyo samaki wamekuwa uh, wameongezeka wengi tu uh, safi sana mbona So I think these reefs are going to be incredibly important supporting the artisanal fisheries because they're going to enhance fish stocks The long term plan is to really bring back the ecological status of the marine environment. The artificial reef is an important component of the bigger conservation picture of, of NEMBA. And it's part of the bigger co-management agreement that and Beyond has with the Ministry of the Economy for the NEMBA Island Marine Special Area that is around NEMBA Island. So special area before it was 200 meters on both sides at Kichwani and also but, uh, now we increased it to five, 500 meters. If we increase this area, we can increase also the fee, $25. Instead of $3 and a lot of people, if we can minimize the number of tourists to come here, we can increase the fund and the benefit to the local community will be better than this time. It will increase the financial conservation revenues to the communities by 1100% uh, and more, um, which is significant to the communities. Tourism activities will proceed but with control. So number of boats, we agreed to be two boats with maximum of like seven people at a time, one hour and then they go out and another boat comes in. So now 
when the boats they are waiting for their turn to go to the Mnemba area, they go around the artificial reef and they guess they can do activities there. Uh, tunashukuru sana kwa sababu hii hifadhi tunaitumia kwa kuletea kwa kuleta wageni na wageni wanakuja kuangalia coral na samaki pale. Kwa sababu ikiwa ikiwa coral hamna na samaki hamna kikweli wageni hatokuja. Ana ala hatovutiwa na kuja kuangalia sentupu tu pale. All government through blue economy and the fisheries, private sectors and beyond and the local community, all of us will benefit from, from increasing this area. So yeah, it brings together a nice big conservation and community involvement and development program that, that will work really well. So the artificial reef will take a lot of tourist pressure off the Nemba House Reef. We are busy with the restoration program of that reef. So it will also ensure that that restoration program works, which is phase one. 2021, the project was started. We had about 23 coral tables where we were growing coral fragments. And to date, we have 40 coral tables and we have planted about 5,800 colonies onto the Nemba House Reef to try and restore the coral cover so and then increase the diversity. Obviously phase two would be once we've restored the house reef, we'll then start working with, with the Ministry of the Economy on restorations of other shallow reefs around the atoll. The government have indicated that uh, if this model works, they will duplicate it in other areas around Zanzibar. We have uh, big plants going forward. 